a little guy, but in Florida, my home state right now, he is hiring workers from other countries because he claims no Americans will do those jobs. This is the guy that says he's fighting to protect the American worker in Florida. There are 300 people that said, we'll take those jobs, Americans. He doesn't hire them. Instead, he brings in workers from abroad to do those jobs, and he goes on television saying, oh, we can't find qualified people to do that work. And there are qualified people raising their hands saying, we'll do that work. We have a guy that last night spent literally 30 seconds defending Planned Parenthood. He did it better than Harry Reid does it. This is what's trying to take over the conservative movement. It is time to open our eyes and see what's happening here. For the first time in 36 years, if Donald Trump is elected, the conservative movement will be, will be headed up by somebody who says that when it comes to Israel and the Palestinians, he's not taking sides. Well, I'm taking sides. I'm with Israel. We had a guy yesterday that was saying on the stage, oh, if you don't support government takeover of health care, then you're in favor of letting people die in the streets. Well, I've heard that before in the Democratic debate from Bernie Sanders and Hillary Clinton and Barack Obama. So it's time the charade is up. This is a con job where he's going to Americans that are struggling, Americans that are hurting, and he's implying, I'm fighting for you because I'm a tough guy. A tough guy? This guy inherited $200 million. He's never faced any struggle. He's never faced... The other day he told somebody, a uh, protester, I'm going to punch you in the face. Donald Trump has never punched anyone in the face. <laughs> Donald Trump was the first guy that begged for Secret Service protection. First guy. He's never punched anyone in the face. He inherited $200 million. I said it last night. If he had not inherited $200 million right now, he would be selling watches in Times Square or be doing one of those infomercials on Saturday morning where he promises to teach you how to flip properties, right? So we unmasked him last night. And let me tell you, it's time for you to unmask him as well. I bet you, you all know... You all have friends. You all have friends that are thinking about voting for Donald Trump. Friends, do not let friends vote for con artists. All right? So, you want to have a little fun? All right. What does Donald Trump do when things go wrong? He takes to Twitter. I have them right here. Let's read some. You'll have fun. All right, number one. Here's the first one. Lightweight Marco Rubio was working hard last night. This is true. The problem is, he is a chalker. And once a chalker, always a choker. I guess that's what he meant to say. He spelled choker, C-H-O-K-E-R, chalker. He called me Mr. Meltdown. Let me tell you something. Last night in the debate, during one of the breaks, two of the breaks, he went backstage. He was having a meltdown. First, he had this little makeup thing applying, like, makeup around his mustache because he had one of those sweat mustaches. Then, then he asked for a full-length mirror. I don't know why, because the podium goes up to here, but he wanted a full-length mirror. Maybe to make sure his pants weren't wet. I don't know. Then, then I see him pacing back and forth, and then he's huddled in the corner talking to somebody. He's like waving his arms up and down, and the person's trying to calm him down. So, anyway. But I'm, the, I'm a chalker. All right. Next tweet. Leet weight chalker Marco Rubio looks like a little boy on stage, not presidential material. He meant to say lightweight, but he spelled it E-L-E-I-G-H-T. So he, he got that wrong. Looks like a little boy on stage. It's not that I look like a little boy. I wouldn't even be the youngest president, but he would be the oldest president ever elected. And it's like an eight-year term, so you start to worry. <laughs> All right. Last one. Wow, every poll said I won the debate last night. No, this was him about himself, okay? Great B and the O were nowhere near each other on the keyboard. Great honer. All right. So... Here's what, I, yeah, that's what I'm thinking. So how does this guy, not in one tweet, three tweets misspell words so badly? And I only reached two conclusions. 
Number one, that's how they spell those words at the Wharton School of Business, where he went. Or number two, just like Trump Tower, he must have hired a foreign worker to do his own tweets. All right. So, guys, we have a con artist as the front runner in the Republican Party. A guy, a guy who has made a career out of telling people lies so that they come in and buy his product or whatever he does. You ever heard of Trump vodka? You have? Well, it doesn't around anymore. Or Trump mattress? Or Trump air? Or Trump ice? Or Trump water? Those are all businesses that are gone because they were disasters. Okay? Trump hot air, yeah. So we cannot allow the conservative movement to be taken over by a con artist because the stakes are too high. This country faces an election in which our very identity as a people is at stake. For over two centuries, this has been a special country, unique in the history of all mankind. But that was never an accident. That happened because the people who came before us made the right choices and incredible sacrifices. And now the time has come for this generation to do its part. And here's what I want you to believe, and it's not a slogan, it is the truth. If we do what needs to be done right now in this election, we have a chance to make this nation greater and more prosperous and freer than it has ever been in its history. That is the opportunity before us. But not if we stay on the road that we are on right now. Not if Bernie Sanders or Hillary Clinton wins this election. And they will win this election if we do not nominate the right person. And there is a reason why the media is pulling its punches when it comes to Donald Trump. Look, I had articles written about me that I, you know, had 10 traffic tickets or my wife had traffic tickets because of a red light camera. And that's another scam that we should get rid of, the red light camera trap. I had a reporter go back and say, find that in nine, when I was 18 years old, a friend, friends and I went to a park after I see some young kids here. I am against this, but I'm going to tell you what I did when I was 18. We went to drink beer in a park after hours at 18, okay? I knew you would cheer that in Texas. You're cheering. But this guy, Donald Trump, has a lawsuit against him for fraud. You don't hear anything. It's crickets. Because they know, once he's, first of all, they know if this guy's the nominee, we're going to have someone as the Republican nominee that defends Planned Parenthood, as someone who defends single payer for health care, as someone who won't take sides on Israel's side against the Palestinians, this is a dream for them. And number two, because they know the minute he gets the nomination, they will shred him to pieces. And so they are looking for this. They are, they are encouraging this to happen. We cannot nominate someone that is going to get shredded to pieces. Because the consequences are Bernie Sanders, a socialist, or Hillary Clinton, someone who was unqualified to be commander-in-chief, who put classified information on her email server, someone who lied to the families of the victims of Benghazi, and anyone who lies, anyone who lies to the family of people who have lost their loved ones in the service of our country can never be the commander-in-chief of the United States of America. We cannot lose this election. You nominate me, we will not lose this election. You nominate me, not only will you have a real conservative, you will have a conservative that unites the Republican Party and brings us together after this circus act we've had to li li live with for nine months. And you will have someone that will grow this party, not by changing our principles. We are going to take our principles to people who are living today the way that I grew up. People who have lived paycheck to paycheck like, I am, like I've lived. People that have had to borrow money to go to school, real schools, not fake universities. Like people who, are, who, people who are trying to raise their families in the 21st century and how hard it's become to do that, to instill in your children the right values, the right values they teach in our churches instead of the values that they ram down our throats in popular culture. We are going to unite the conservative movement and we are going to grow it and we will win this election when we do. And then we have a lot of work to do because we have a lot of damage to undo. First of all, you elect me president for the first time in...